Hey there, gang. Hello, hello. Thought I would uh, check in on uh, Hanau from the Viva Emperor series uh, from the Pratson Editions, Didier Rue's uh, tactical game. It's uh, 250 meters from 250 yards a hex. It's uh, 20, uh, 30 minute turns. And uh, it, look, I, I've talked about the game system before, so I don't want to get go ad nauseum about the game system and talking through all the bits and pieces that uh, I would normally do. Uh, you know, who, what role are you playing and all this sort of stuff and uh, consumability of the rules. What I'm keen to do as briefly as I can is touch on some of the things that I think would make this an even better game than it is. So I enjoyed the gameplay enjoyed the uh the you know i'm only i was in uh, turned halfway three quarters of the way through turn three and realized i kind of screwed up tactically as the uh as the uh Aust austrian uh bavarian or whatever they are uh, side and really didn't do a, a particularly good job uh, tactically of playing and so it's kind of over but we want to uh i certainly want to keep uh, reset it and that's why it's still out and i'm about to set up a, another game over here but uh, I put it on top, and then I'm going to rotate back to this one. So let's talk about let's talk about the game. That what would have made this uh, an even better introductory game, given it's a one mapper with one counter sheet, and uh, what would have what would make this system a little bit more approachable to guys who are not soaked in or immersed in napoleonics but uh napoleonics curious right they want to they want to understand napoleonics or they want to understand what all the fuss was about or they're curious about the battles and they're looking for a system uh didier's put uh quite a few modules out now and uh, there's a one that just came out with four uh battles from the 1805 or 1806 campaign i forget which it is and uh it, it looks beautiful it's got a whole bunch of maps and it's got these gorgeous new maps which despite the that kind of comp that old style compass map printing that I'm not a super fan of, uh, that kind of can peel and crack. As you can see here, you can see the, the cracking lines already and I've just opened this up. Other than that, gorgeous maps and all the rest of it. So let's talk about the things that could be uh, refined and touched upon to kind of kick this whole thing up a, no a notch and make it a more accessible game system for more players if that's what you want to do. If you don't want to do that, then hey, that's cool. Just keep doing what you do. Setup, uh, for the first time that I recall, uh, there's now setup locations on the maps and uh, we're, we're done with letters, except it's not consistent. There are, there are setup instructions here for nearly every formation, except some. And, and then when they're not given a letter, so for instance, there should have been a letter put right here. Uh, and uh, it could have been whatever the next one in the alphabet is right there, and that would have saved me reading, uh, oh, uh, below the Lamboy Bridge at the same level on the road <laughs> near the trees, <laughs> stick your units within two or whatever. Um, why not just put another letter here and just be done with it? You've got them all over the map now anyway. You know, they don't necessarily have to be that big, but it's great that they are. They're easy to find. That's fine. And I love the fact there's no hex numbers on this. It's beautiful. It keeps the immersive quality of the game and the theme coming out. It's, it's cool. But come on, like just one extra one extra little doohickey here and we wouldn't have to have two or three sentences trying to explain. I wouldn't have to post on BGG asking if this really is where it is meant to be. Similarly with the victory conditions. The victory conditions say, hey, uh, this is the Kinzig River. Kinzig River. There's an error either in the, the written rules and the scenarios or on the map and the charts that it's Kinzig with a T or without a T. I don't know which, but it's, it's both ways uh, across the game system. And so... The victory condition says uh, if the French clear all the bad guys north of the river, you get 20 victory points. Well, <clears throat> you know, being the OCD type that some players tend to be, they would go, well, Kinsig River here, north of here, right? What about west of here? Does that count? Should it have said north of the Kinzig and at the main as well? 
It probably should have. That would have saved another uh, <laughs> another question. And I know there's another YouTuber out there who had uh, posted a number of videos and was playing under the assumption that it was north of the river. This section, north of the river. Uh, that was the victory condition for 20 victory points. So we're all getting older. And if you're a young gamer, you've got thousands of games you want to play. The last thing you want to do is put four, five, six, 10, 12 hours into playing this game and play against a certain set of victory conditions and then go, oh, oh head hang, sigh. I played it wrong. So let's just be clear and crisp on this stuff. All right, so that's, that's that. Now, this is version 3.3 of the rules. There she is there. Uh, the last version I really paid a lot of attention to was 3.2. Uh, which is the uh, the one for Waterloo and Wav and all that sort of good stuff. Um, I only played one or two scenarios at a Talavera module with had the battles, the Peninsula campaign stuff, so I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to the rules in that because I was just using a consolidated printout that uh, someone had done full color with the advanced sequence of play, and I forgot that I had this all printed out, but uh, there's, this is really cool actually. It's on, I think it's on one of the, the web, the one of the BGG pages. It's really, really quite well done, and the rules are sort of updated and consolidated with all the FAQ. But 3.3 rules are pretty slick, and a full color, and much more concise, and cleaner. There are some new rules for routing. There are some new uh, clarifications around fire and melee and cavalry charges and counter charges and stuff like that. All very good. It still needs a little more work. Uh, it, it still needs that uh, there's a level of crisp, crispness that's lacking and I find myself flicking around the rules trying to, trying to understand what disorganized means for the various unit types and uh, how far do I retreat for the various unit types? What am I allowed to do in certain modes? Uh, so th there's just some stuff that would have been cleaner and crisper. And like I said, uh, oh, well, I haven't said yet. Uh, there's nice new charts here. It would have been nice to have a sequence of play on here, even this, even the short abbreviated version. Uh, maybe have the stacking on here since you're going, going to all this trouble. Uh, and since this is the second time that I'm actually recording this, because I've, I got a little uh, little uh, flustered with my commentary, I got out of, out of whack on what I was trying to say uh, about the rules versions. Um, I don't think I've mentioned yet that there's there's an interesting little thing that goes on here with these formations. I'm trying to show you this. So, and this will be a lot more succinct than the last time I tried. Uh, you can see the reserve formation uh, Fresnel uh, has, and he's Bavarian, uh, which is not said anywhere in the rules, which is one of the issues I have. Uh, the blue and the gray units, are, they're not delineated anywhere in the rules to say who's who. We obviously know that the, the blue dudes, are, the other blue dudes are French. But anyway, these guys, uh, these Bavarians, are uh, the formation is the pink. And so we would reference off of uh, the reserve line infantry 14A and these reserve hussars are uh, all attached to the core, the reserve core. And these, I guess, are the individual divisions or uh, whatnot. I guess it must be divisions. Um, and that w that's, that's how they're breaking these down. I naturally went to the stripes across the counter looking for, okay, where does this belong? What core does this belong to? So that's a nitpick, right? It can, really doesn't matter. But I just, I found it odd. And once I realized I, I stopped, stopped punching stuff out, set up an entire core and then looked at it and went, ah, okay. The yellow and the green and the red all with the pink, all belong to the same place. Uh, so that took a little, just just took a minute. It's a little kind of like, oops. Um, not enough information counters in the game. Uh, first turn, I'd, I'd whack through all of these. And I, I was unclear. I'm still uncertain or not certain about 
how best to use these information counters, whether to ignore what the rule says and uh, just say, hey, look, if on, if on turn, th you're supposed to put, it's supposed to be that the turn in which you are disorganized, you put one of these markers on it, and then two turns later, you get to do something about that disorganization. It would make more sense to me to put, if I'm disorganized in turn five, that, uh, sorry, disorganized in turn three, that on turn five, I get to do something about it. Uh, and so I put a five down on it and I can look at that and go, oh yeah, it's turn five. I should uh, try and recover those guys. But that's not how it works, apparently. With the route rules, I didn't understand them in terms of putting two markers down. I don't know why there are two markers that were required to be put down. It seemed like there was a half finished thought going on there, not sure. I don't know why there are necessarily disorganized counters for the for the artillery and there's either not enough post charge markers and I don't necessarily that because they they're disorganized now. So do I put one of those on there and one of these on there? that really wasn't necessarily clear. Like it doesn't say, hey, place a post charge marker on there. Or maybe it does and I didn't read it. I, I don't friggin' know. But I found myself bouncing around the rules quite a bit. And for what is now a, a feels like a substantially shorter rule book, so I think the old rules, oh, I don't know, they clocked in all up 31 pages. Let's see what this is. Feels like it might be about the same now. If we take out the design and notes, it's actually longer. So there you go, 36, but it felt like it was better worded and crisper. So that's interesting. Uh, maybe there are more expansive notes in here and I'm just a dumbass, but you know, you've got these nice historical notes in here. You've got examples in red. Uh, there's lots of bolding and I think the spacing is certainly done a lot better. You can see just by comparison here, right? You know, it's chalk and cheese, right? So much higher production values, very nicely done. Okay, look, I don't want to get, I don't want to go on about this. This is not, you know, super pet peeve time, but I just think if, if this was supposed to be a introductory module to get you excited about the system and then you go and buy uh, the two other systems that are available from uh, Legion Games, I think we kind of missed the mark a little bit and we, and things could have been more crisply uh, described here. Certainly like all of the new charts and tables and, ha and the layout of them and the explanation of them is mostly good. Uh, but it, but as I've had a couple of folks uh, comment to me when they saw that I was starting to play, they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm kind of stumbling through this rule book here. It's just this kind of haphazard, I don't understand. Uh, are you gonna do any examples? And of course I went and did a couple of examples and, and promptly buggered it up because I don't do examples well. Nevertheless, they're my kind of sort of 30,000 foot view uh, comments on the game and the game system. Love the counters, love the maps, enjoy the gameplay. It is pretty straightforward. I've had folks say to me, oh, well, it's kind of the dumbed down version of La Bataille. I don't believe with the, with the spread of choices you have with the command rules and the fact that you are, you are trying to do pretty, uh, re well, you're doing regimental level versus battalion level decision making, which is still fairly detailed. You are rolling to see if you can make a square. You are uh, doing morale checks for certain things. You are, you are conducting artillery fire and cavalry charges and moving from column to line and making the right choices about that and getting this kind of disrupted into what's called general order in a town and things of that nature. So th there's a fair bit to this game. It's certainly more nuanced and detailed than the Hexasim. Uh, game system, which is, you know, one of my two favorites, and this would be my second. Well, actually, I have three favorites. Uh, this would be my second, I think. And then I, I still love the Napoleonic Brigade system. I think uh, MMP had hit the nail on the head with that orders system there and th the way that they dealt with and tried to refine melee and fire, combat, uh, uh, fire being exchanged and stuff like that, I thought was pretty nifty. Uh, you won't find any extraneous 
foreign language in here that it will cause you to pause and second guess yourself, you'll be able to know that a fire table is a fire table. Uh, you will be able to immerse yourself in the history and the reading that would uh, get your blood going uh, if you want to look into Hanau and learn about the various leaders in the game without, without, uh, that are in the game without getting uh, hung up and caught up on doing a lot of translating and, and whatnot uh, and no, needing to know formation colors and epaulettes and piping and all this sort of nonsense that uh, you might need to know to read a counter in some other systems. But nevertheless, uh, this has got a lot going on for it. I think it's a good mid-tier tactical game that's relatively approachable. It's, uh, it's got some good things going for it. It just needs to be continued to be refined and polished up. All right, 15 minutes, way too long. 16 minutes. Talk to you soon. Ciao.